Welcome to lecture 3. This lecture would be on urban land use planning. So the key concepts covered in this lecture would be land use and land cover, land use classification and structure, town planning guidelines and municipal bylaws. Town planning guidelines and municipal bylaws are considered uh, so that you can so that we can also discuss on how this influences integrated land use transportation planning. So coming to land use and land cover, uh, land use refers to the purpose the land serves or the different activities carried out in them, for example, residential, commercial, recreation, etc. But land covers refers to the surface cover on the ground, whether it can be water bodies, it can be natural vegetations, rocks, artificial cover and artificial cover means built up area, means you know maybe some built up urban area. And not only that, also changes in that over a period of time. So we not only consider the land use or land cover of an urban area, we also understand the transformation both land use and land cover has gone through over a period of time and that actually helps us to understand how the city has grown and also helps us to plan for the future. So this uh, also helps us uh, urban planners to decide what to retain, where to plan for new development, the kinds of development that should be planned over there and what to connect and then what to protect. So that means if you find certain areas as disjointed, that means those has to be connected. If you find certain areas are sensitive, you know, based on the land cover, you can say, see that, okay, there is forest land cover and that, you know, there over a period of time it is depleting. So that means that has to be protected. And then when you are talking about where to plan for new development, that means you need based on your land, existing land use structure, and land cover, you can decide what should be a suitable area for industry or, you know, a residential area and so on. So first we look at land cover, which is a broad classification of the different features that are available on the land surfaces. For example, is it built up area or is it forest area and so on. And then further classification of the built up area using land use, you know, classifications, we can even further classify that land. So once we have land cover data with us, then using land suitability analysis, we can formulate what sort of land use is suitable for a particular land area. So land suitability analysis helps us to decide what sort of land use is suitable for a particular area with a particular kind of land cover now. For example, if an area is having lot of productive agriculture, it's, you know, it's not useful to put residential or other kind of land use over there or rather we will try to provide the residential land use in another area if there is enough space available. So when we talk about land use and land cover uh, maps and uh, or you know whenever we are talking about development plans we require both land use and land cover maps for preparation of development not only the development plan but also the final land use maps or the final maps that we prepare for that urban area and we can do you do both use both remote sensing and geographical information systems gis systems to develop this kind of maps so first whenever we have to prepare a development plan we need to prepare a base map and we use both land use maps and land cover maps for previous years to prepare the base map and once uh, uh, base map is prepared we prepare an existing land use plan where we show that okay this is the percentages of land use in the particular you know uh, in each particular category of land uses what per, based on both ground truth and based based on both remote sensing data and finally we have got uh, finally based on the existing land use and the way we are going to develop an urban area we will also have a proposed land use plan at the future what kind of data we can use? There is a lot of free data available. Uh, for example, uh, we have Bhuvan land use sheets, which is available from, uh, uh, from our government of India. And the, uh, Bhu, uh, Bhuvan data contains land use data, land cover data, administrative boundaries data, infrastructure data, water bodies, watershed boundaries, and so on, soil resources. 
and similarly we also have and this is a more recent data set that is available with us uh, we also have this national urban information system database which contains both uh, this map data as well as you know attribute or, or a database as well along with that for example we have got both thematic data and attribute data in thematic data we have again land use land cover map the scale is a, of us uh, is also different uh, physiography map, uh, geomorphology, geological structures, lithology maps, soil maps, drainage maps and so on. And in administrative data, we have got administrative boundaries, forest boundary, settlement names and so on. So both these databases could be used for preparation of our development plans. And along with that, if I want to do more specialized studies, for example, how uh, green cover is uh, depleting over a period of time, I can use other data sets as well. For example, we can look into satellite imagery data from ISRO, uh, Indian uh, Space Research Organization, and we can also use these maps for preparation of land use and land cover maps for a particular urban area, and also eventually preparing development plans. So this is an example of a uh, land cover map for the state of West Bengal. Uh, the, the source is given over here, you can see the source. So uh, in this map you can see that we have got built up area which is uh, you can see urban, uh, rural, uh, then there is mining and then there is agricultural land like cropland, agricultural plantations, fallow land, current sh uh, shifting cultivation, land for that. And then we have forests, different kinds of forests, we have grasslands, we have got barren lands, we have got wetlands. So this is a land cover map of West Bengal, which we have obtained from Bhuvan data sheets. And then we also have got a land use map for Kharagpur town uh, in West Bengal, India. And you can see here, we are focusing only on the built up area and we are showing roads, rail, drainage, residential areas commercial areas, industrial areas, mixed use areas and so on. So both these data sets are available. The internet addresses are given over here. You can explore uh, the other you know, uh, maps, uh, maps for your own area or your own city and that would actually help you to understand both the land use and land cover of the areas where you reside. So when we talk about land use, uh, land use uh, what are the different kinds of land use? Uh, the town planning guidelines actually has specified 10 broad land uses and around 40 you know subcategories of those land uses you can see in the table in the slide you can see there is residential land use there is commercial land use there is industrial land use and within residential land use you can see there are primary residential zones then there are unplanned or informal residential zones and then uh, we have commercial, within commercial we have got retail shopping zone, general business and commercial district centers, wholesale go-downs, warehousing, regulated markets and so on. So similarly in uh, industry we have got service and light industry, we have extensive and heavy industry and so on. So these are the different categories of land uses that are there and usually an urban built area or develop uh, uh, built up area in urban uh, uh, local bodies could be divided into this sort of land uses and we, we need this division so that we can segregate the different activities. But at the same time, some there could be also mixed land uses where we can have mixed industrial use zones, we can have mixed residential zones, we have got mixed commercial zones, so this is also possible. So we have got around 42 uh, land use categories which we can use and then there are uh, 10 uh, broad categories which could be done at the perspective plan level. So that means we don't have to, at the perspective plan level, when we prepare our plans, we can prepare, uh, we can only consider this, you know, broad areas of residential or uh, industrial and so on. But when we prepare master plans or development plans, we have to prepare land uses of each of these 42 land use categories. Or when we have to propose, uh, re, uh, we have to reserve lands for future uh, purposes or future uh, growth of the city, then we have to reserve land for this 42 land use category types. So then uh, once the plan is prepared, once a land use plan is prepared, it is not absolute and obviously based on certain requirements that arise over time, the uh, authorities or government bodies, they can also 
allow certain changes in the land use which could be taken care of by spot zoning. That means we can either change or relax certain land use in a broader area which is already finalized in a you know development plan and we can you know we can change this sm uh, for smaller areas but changing big areas probably is not you know required or rather is not uh, should not is not suitable for uh, a particular development plan and uh, so when we do a development plan exercise, when we specify that, okay, we will have a residential area, there are certain kinds of activities which are permitted in that area. There are certain kinds of activities which are restricted in that area. Means we can allow in certain cases or certain varieties of those could be allowed. And then there are certain prohibited activities. For example, in an urban area, which is designated as a residential land use, we can also have some amount of commercial uh, areas where local shopping could be take could be you know uh, local sh shopping could take uh, could take place similarly we can also allow certain amount of home based offices to operate from certain residential areas so these are permitted categories restricted categories means we can have certain amount of uh, schools and institutions but they could be limited or you know small in sizes and then there are certain categories or they have to be or certain kinds of uh, uh, so, some amount of uh, instit not only institutions but maybe some form of industry if it's small it is not creating much problem uh, or we can you know do a case by case check and then allow that industry to come over here but or to be set up in that particular area but there are certain activities which are prohibited for example we cannot have an oil refinery in a residential zone so this is a prohibited activity so there so there are that means there is no absolute uh, rule to say that this activity is not permitted or this activity is not be allowed in a particular land use category so there are overlaps of course and that is up to the discretion of the local planning body to decide what activities should be permitted in a particular uh, land use area or a particular area which has been designated with a particular land use so this uh, uh, that means uh, there are you know this is so once the development plan is uh, prepared it acts as a guideline and it is not a document which has to be which is you know very strictly adhered to so it is added to to the best possible uh, extent but there are certain changes which takes place and this that means the urban area continuously goes through transformation and eventually when the next development plan takes place we update the land use to include these changes that has been allowed in case in certain you know certain instances that has taken place so then uh, when we talk about after we talk about land use then we talk about the different so this uh, land use categories actually as you can uh, see that in this land use categories uh, we have got different kinds of land use and each requires different kind of transportation to support that land use for example if you have industry and you have residential you require transportation to connect re between residential and industrial land uses so similarly whenever we are so the land use classification actually has got an impact on the kind of land use transport integration that will take up will be taken up in an urban area or what kind of integration is possible in an urban area so similarly whenever we are looking at urban settlements urban settlements are of different sizes and the size of urban settlements determine what kind of land use should be there what should be the cat not only the what categories of land use should be allowed inside or what should be the percentages of those land use but what would be the predominant land use all these things are, de uh, are uh, depends on some amount of it depends on the size of the town some sometimes it depends on the context or what has been the historical context of that town if it's a, a town which is mostly uh, contains a historical central core and lot of uh, conserv areas which are you know uh, archae are archaeological sites or you know very uh, nice uh, buildings which has been preserved then it has got a different flavor so we will plan that town in a different way so both the size and the type of town plays a role in how the plans needs to be developed or how the land use categories needs to be designed for that particular town but first of all we should understand what kind of uh, towns are there 
and in uh, census of india uh, has defined uh, different categories of towns and first of all urban settlements as defined by census of india are uh, areas where uh, the minimum population size is around 5000 and then it has got 75 uh, percent of the uh, population would be not, not doing engaged in agriculture and they are doing non-agricultural work and also the population density should be more than 400 persons per square kilometer so these are the criteria based on which urban settlements have been or areas areas have been defined as urban settlements and we have different kinds of urban settlements depending on size for example we have small towns starting from 5000 to 20000 population range and these are again managed by a municipal council then we have got uh, medium towns which is from uh, 50000 to 1 lakh or there are medium towns of second category which is 1 lakh to 5 lakh and they are governed by a municipal council and then there are large cities starting from 5 lakh and then it could be something like a megapolis where it could be of uh, even more than 1 crore and these are managed by a municipal corporation so not only the the authority which prepares uh, manages that particular area is different so the plan the kind of urban plans that are developed could be of di of different kind and when we talk about urban plans the land use and the kind of transportation systems that we plan for these cities are also different for example in a small town we may not plan for transit corridors because we know that in small towns it is it may not be feasible to set up a brt system or to set up a heavy rail system but in a small town probably it would be supported by mostly walking bicycling and maybe to some extent paratransit so the transportation system is different the land use structure could be different and even the governing system should be di would be different so that results in different kinds of development plans for different kinds of towns so when we talk about uh, land use structure uh, th that basically is a not a this is just a guideline which actually tells us that what kind of land use uh, what amount of land use should be there in a particular town uh, as i was discussing during the last slide that uh, that depending on the town we decide on what kind of land use categorization we will do or what kind of percent what amount of land we will allocate to different kinds of land use but this actually shows you this actually gives us an idea about uh, uh, that you know what amount of land we should reserve for uh, different kinds of land use and when we are preparing a plan for example in residential land use category uh, we if for small towns it is almost 50% Whereas in a large uh, metropolitan city, it is only to the extent of around 35 to 30, you know, 35, 36 percent. So there is a there is huge difference between a small city and a metropolitan city. The reason because metropolitan cities has got different kinds of activities happening in that. For example, in a metropolitan cities, we see that there is uh, the commercial area is uh, relatively more compared to a small city. The industrial area it could be more it could be less but uh, in certain uh, of course public and semi public and recreational areas public and semi public area means there are a lot of institutions in a big city which are missing in a small city so accordingly the land use structure is also different in these different cities and uh, then uh, uh, when we are uh, planning for when we are designing the land use structure of an urban area uh, we also have to consider the historical background of the city or how the city has grown and there uh, in the, uh, we have seen that when uh, we, have, we were discussing last time that the in if the inner city area is very dense you cannot change land use in that particular area but what we will do is when we plan for the surrounding area or new area which would be taken up for development there we will adopt this percentage or we will try to adopt this kind of land use breakup in those new areas whereas the old areas will remain as it is or we will try to improve that but it it is difficult because already this is this has been built up and usually population density in these core areas are much higher than the periphery so we for new for new plants we will try to adopt this land use structure or these guidelines for the new areas that we are going to develop not for the old areas so next 
uh, I will discuss on uh, four concepts which are actually play which plays a role in determining the form of an urban area or the structure of an urban area and this is very very important when we consider land use and transportation planning for an urban area. For example, uh, this uh, population density, the carrying capacity and then we have also got the uh, floor area index and the ground coverage which is you know this four characteristics of an urban area influences urban form and this also could be controlled to determine the structure of an urban area. For example, uh, population density and carrying capacity these are almost synonymous for example, uh, there are guidelines uh, for example, when we increase population in an area it actually increases uh, the you know the pressure in that area. For example, the, the roads become congested, people may not get enough adequate space to live, the infrastructure may not be able to support so many people, the urban services of solid waste collection and all these things cannot may not be able to you know support so many people in living in a very small area. So, there are optimum densities which are again you know guidelines which are uh, which are given in the URDPFI guidelines you can consult that or you can form your own guidelines for deciding on what kind of density is ideal for your urban area based on based on other considerations and usually we say that uh, uh, when we uh, for small towns the density is somewhere around 75 to 125 persons per hectare whereas for large towns it it should be around 125 to 175 people per hectare and whereas for megalopolis it could be even higher so, this kind of densities and again when you look into hilly areas the density would be even lesser than uh, you know the plain areas. So, this is the density which is suitable for developing a particular urban area. Can we develop more compact areas? Yes, we can but provided we give infrastructure and other kind of support facilities for those particular areas. But normal areas with standard infrastructure and standard urban structure that we have decided discussed in the la, in the you know previously there we have it is better to stick to this kind of densities and when we talk about density it could be density based on it could be population density it could be based on uh, the number of residential uh, areas or it could be based on the number of houses per acre it could be based on number of habitable rooms per acre and so on so in uh, along with density there is <coughs> there is another concept which is called floor space index which can also help us in determining what kind of uh, density is res uh, what kind of density a uh, 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 developed area results in for example if we uh, if we increase the floor space, uh, space index for a particular area what it means is we can construct more amount of buildings for a particular plot of land. So, when we increase number of the, the total number uh, the building uh, the constructed amount of uh, uh, square footage for a particular uh, plot of land obviously we can have more number of families residing in those particular buildings. So, that leads to more residential density. So, we can control urban residential densities and using and controlling urban density can result in changing the form of the structure of an urban area and this is also impacts the transportation and the land use of that particular area. So, for residential areas we can uh, use re both residential density or uh, floor area density for a particular area, but for uh, commercial non residential areas or commercial areas we, we the measures that we can use is built up area per acre or the floor space index for that particular area. So, the concept of next in the concept of carrying capacity it is almost similar to density, but the only difference is in the this particular concept uh, we can say that the we define the maximum number of people that could be supported in a particular area. So, when we say there is this is the maximum limit a particular area uh, particular area can hold it is based on multiple criteria and it, it could be based on the desired levels of congestion in that particular area, it could be based on the infrastructure capacity, it could be based on the institutional capacity, it could be based on environmental capacity or it could be based on the sustainable 
you know levels of you know number of uh, people that could be stay in a particular area but what it also means is if any one of this fails you may you may say that well we will stick to the limit like for example uh, the amount of water supply if the water the capacity of water supply is limited we cannot have more number of people even though other capacities are available for example the 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 roads are wide in this area it may support lot of people lot of you know uh, vehicles moving in that particular road but actually uh, uh, but actually it uh, you know it doesn't helps so we have to stick to the one which is failing that means if water supply is not there the capacity limit is decided by the one which is the most vulnerable among all this so this is the concept of carrying capacity and then we have the concept of uh, we already discussed floor space index and the concept of ground coverage so these are another two tools using which we can control the development of or rather the structure and the urban form the uh, uh, the density and you know to fsi to some or far or fsi to some extent could be said as part of the urban planning guidelines but whereas fsi and ground coverage is more or less part of municipal bylaws that means municipal corporations decide what is the available floor area ratio or fsi for a particular area and it can also decide on what is the ground coverage for a particular building or a particular plot of land so fsi uh, is defined as the ratio between total covered floor area that is built up area to the plot area of the building and it is a indicator of built up area per acre based on fir consumed that means even though fir is high it may not have been consumed that means the entire fir may not have been utilized so that is a determinant of how much density is there in a particular area and fir for a particular area is set by the uh, using uh, set by the municipal corporation considering multiple factors which could be like width of a street that means if the street is you know not that wide we cannot allow construction of a very high rise building or rather we cannot give very high fir and then it can it has to const, uh, consider the present and not only present the future traffic load in that particular street needs to be considered because if i give higher fir then probably we may end up with a shopping mall in that particular street and that road may not be able to take the resulting transportation lo traffic load that is arising because of the presence of the shopping mall then it could be depending on the parking availability for example it's a residential area there is no parking available the streets are very very you know uh, uh, thin and then if you, if i give higher fir it may result in more number of people you know coming there and then they will require cars and that needs to be parked and that parking space is not available similarly we can look at land use and the locality and the you know and the, how the locality is organized we can look into the utilities and infrastructure that is available the existing population density that is there the type of buildings that are there the kind of fire fighting services all this determine what kind of fir could be give set for a particular area and use and using different values of fir we can decide on the urban structure and form so that means if we have a if we want to go for transit oriented development we want to increase the fir of a of the area surrounding our uh, transit node in that case we also have to ensure that the area has got with wide streets it has got parking it has got different sorts of you know uh, land use categorized it has got infrastructure supporting this kind of intense development so after uh, fir the second tool that municipal gov municipal authorities have to decide on the urban form form or the urban structure is setbacks so in some in residential areas or in certain plots we can we have setbacks which actually uh, means that okay certain amount of land has to be left for the building that means from the edge of the plot to the building edge there has to be certain amount of land which has to be reserved which has to be kept open which has to be an open to sky and it has to be open to sky so this uh, this setback is again decided based on the building height the road width the plot size fire safety requirements because if i don't allow this setback then a fire tender cannot get inside two buildings so these are the challenges that has to be overcome and accordingly municipal authorities decide on setbacks but when i decide on a setback that means that 
if the setbacks are too high that means we are only allowing a small part of the plot to be built and that will result in a tall building compared to a large you know a small building so whenever if the fr is low then the building would be small but if the fr is high then it will become a tall building because the setback is high so that is how also you can uh, you know create uh, you can control the urban structure and the urban form but in case of gated communities and you know a, you know a plotted developments where we have a large plot with multiple buildings in that we cannot have setbacks but here we set ground coverage standards which means certain percentage of the ground should be left empty so this is how these are the different tools a municipality can use or even you know a urban planner can use to decide on the urban structure and eventually this actually influence the land use and transport interaction in an urban area so the you can see this uh, document from the ministry of housing and urban development urban and urdpfi guidelines this could be consult you can consult that as a reference for this particular lecture and it will show you the different tools and techniques available with municipal and urban planners to control uh, the uh, the urban land use and the urban land uh, the urban form for a particular uh, for a particular urban look uh, urban local body and to conclude this particular lecture we can say land cover and land use structure of an area influences urban form and the travel demand characteristics of that particular area and urban form on the other hand can be influenced through changing urban density and municipal bylaws thank you